Well, hello. The two main laws that Gregor Mendel established are number one, the law of segregation, and number two, the law of independent assortment. The law of segregation shows us that alleles come apart when gametes are formed in meiosis I during anaphase I. This means that big A and little a in a heterozygote come apart. One goes one way and one goes the other way during meiosis. The law of independent assortment asserts that genes come apart during meiosis one, anaphase one, when gametes are formed. This suggests that the genes come apart from each other, not just alleles. So that means you have to be talking about more than one gene. So two traits are not linked together, but come into the gametes independently or separately from each other. So let's take a look. If we look at an example, we see that these two representations of gametes being formed, right? This is really what it would look like, the, right? The end of G2. And during the process of meiosis one and to the end of meiosis one, we see, as we're supposed to, right? If we're talking, right, we'd have to essentially be prophase one. If this is really lined up in the middle, it'd be metaphase one. And one of the homologous pair goes to one cell. The other of each homologous pair goes to the other. In this case, this guy this way, and this guy this way. Now remember, both the green guys could have come over here, and both purple guys could have come over here, or this purple and this green, right? All the different combinations because it's completely independent of each other. But we can see that big A, little a do not both end up in the same gamete, right? And then this guy, meiosis 2, we separate the sisters, and big A is in this cell, little a is in this cell. Just like big B is in this cell, and little b is in this cell. So they are not linked together like they are in the parent. That's the law of segregation, how alleles come apart. They do not stay together in the gametes. The law of independent assortment talks about genes not staying together. It's the same process, right? Meiosis one, this guy came this way, purple guy over here, green guy, purple guy. And what they're saying is that the big A and the big B and the big A or the little A and the little B don't necessarily come together. They come apart, right? This gamete actually will have the dominant allele for whatever gene is on the big chromosome in homologous pair number one. And this gamete would have the recessive allele for chromosome pair number two. There's no linkage of these genes if they're on different chromosomes. This was completely unknown at the time of Mendel. A, we didn't even know about chromosomes, although he suggested there was a particulate inheritance. And so his experiments doing a dihybrid cross showed that, right, big A doesn't always stay with big B, little A doesn't always stay with little B, in the same way that big A doesn't always go with little B, and little A always go with big B. It's a complete random assortment of how the different genes show up in the gametes. So independent assortment is genes coming apart, not linked together. Law of segregation is the alleles coming apart. They're not linked together in the gametes. It's a little easier to see independent assortment when we actually look at a cross. So if we were doing uh, a cross, right, a Punnett square, looking at the F1 offspring, right, cross the F1 on the F1 to get our F2, we can see that in the heterozygote, right, here's the female parent, which is really up here, right, she's really up there, I can put that up there, big R, little r, big Y, little y, and the gametes that are produced. The big R has just as much probability getting together with the big Y as the big R with the little y, as the little r with the big y, as the little r with the little y, and same with this one. So that upon random fertilization, if we figure out this square, we can see all the possibility 
of the genes and the alleles coming back together. They've independently assorted. If this didn't happen, if it were dependent assortment, which, look here, this does not happen. This is not how it works. Right? We can go, ooh, this is not how it works, people. Don't get confused. But if it did and we made this cross, you'd get completely different results. They'd never come apart from each other. That's crap. That's not what happens. There's no such thing as dependent assortment. We can get gene linkage, but we're, but we're not going to talk about gene linkage here. That's only if the genes are very close to each other on the same chromosome. Then they, can't, then they are linked together and they go together. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about genes on separate chromosomes. There's no such thing as dependent assortment. It's independent assortment. Genes come apart. Segregation alleles come apart. That's all you need to know. Good job, people.